Welcome back, trainers, and guess what? It's actually gonna happen. We're gonna be receiving every single Community Day Pokemon that has been released in December. So if you are a bit confused as to what is going on, it does say 2019 on all of the promo pictures, but what is actually gonna be taking place is you're gonna be able to evolve all of the past Community Day Pokemon to receive their exclusive moves. Now taking a look at a list here, we're going to be going over everything you need to know, which ones you want to be focusing on, as well as the EV evolutions. We're going to be talking about that because that is very significant. We're going to be looking at that towards the end of this video. Now, this is going to be going down December 14th and December 15th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., in which if you already have those Pokemon ready to go, you will be able to evolve them in that time frame to receive this special Community Day move whatever one it may be. Now, let's go ahead and go over the information here. So starting on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., you can see increased spawns for the following Pokemon to the right. These images are gonna be brought to you by Leak Duck, and I will have a link to their Twitter in the description. So on December 14th from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m., you can see the following bonuses. Times to catch Stardust, times to catch XP, and half X distance once you do incubate them during that specific time frame, meaning you can go into this event with eggs already incubated and expect their distance to be cut in half. You're going to have to incubate them going into this event at that specific time. So if you're looking at all the Pokemon, you're like, wow, my head is spinning. What exactly can I find what and where? Well, it is pretty much labeled here, but I'm going to break it down for you. So during the community day, hours in which the bonuses are going to be taking place, you will be seeing increased spawns for Totodile, Swinub, Trico, Torchic, Slackoth, and Bagon. So here is the part that I think a few of you are going to be confused on. When exactly can you evolve Pokemon to receive these moves? Well, that is going to be from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. That specific time is going to be when you're going to be able to evolve them. And what's the deal with the 11 to 2? Well, that's when the bonuses are going to be taking place. And I would assume more increased spawns and possibly even higher shiny odds for those specific Pokemon listed that we just went over there. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a catch. if you. Well, those are going to be coming out of the eggs and you're going to have to go and raid for them as well. So if you're trying to get that bag on shiny, you still don't have one of those. You need a good IV. Well, you're going to have to go and raid for one of those, unfortunately, as well as Larvitar. But you're going to be able to hatch that one out of an egg and or go to the raids for. And remember, we're going to be going over all of the relevant ones here in a little bit. So Pikachu is just going to simply come with Surf. There's nothing to write you. So keep that in mind. Going into Sunday, it's going to be basically the same thing we just went over. Same kind of bonuses, but we're going to have a bit of different Pokemon this time around. From 11 to 2 p.m., you're going to be able to encounter Mudkip, Ralts, Trapinch, Tortwig, or Chimchar in the wild. And then from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m., you'll be able to encounter Totodile, Swinub, Trico, Torchic, Mudkip, Ralts, Slackoff, Trapinch, Bagon, Tortwig, and Chimchar. Now remember, if you already have these Pokemon in your inventory, you can simply evolve them from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. to receive that exclusive move. You do not need to catch these Pokemon on these days for them to learn that exclusive Community Day move. But not only that, all of the Pokemon from 2017 and 18 can be evolved during 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday to receive their exclusive move. It doesn't have to be a designated day. And then taking a look at Sunday, these are the Pokemon that will be hatching out of the eggs. Now I'm going to go ahead and assume that all of these are going to be coming out of 2 kilometer eggs and with that half distance you'll be able to hatch a whole lot of them extremely fast. It will cost you a bit of money because of the incubators but maybe they might have some sort of sell going on for those. Now as far as the raids, are those going to be increased? I do believe those will be increased. I mean why wouldn't they be? Now seeing you can't really control what's coming out of the eggs, basically just hatch as many as you can. But as far as going up to these raids, which ones should you specifically be focusing on? I'm going to have to say Larvitar and Beldum. More so Beldum. That thing is an absolute beast. We're about to take a look at all of the Pokemon you should be actually focusing on. And there's actually going to be a little trick with Eevee. You're going to have to have Last Resort to evolve it into its evolutions to maintain that move. So it hasn't been clarified as to is Eevee going to have that move in the raids. But if so, you definitely want to focus on Eevee. We're going to get more into that. Now, taking a look at the top steel type attackers here. Metagross is sitting at the top still. Even over Dialga, 
even Excadrill. So Bullet Punch and Meteor Mash with a DPS of 17.9 and a TDO of 621. Then you have Dialga with Metal Claw and an Iron Head sitting at 15.9 with a TDO of 551. So Metagross has been proving to be fantastic for me. I use it all the time and it never lets me down. So you definitely want to focus on that. Moving on to the grass types here. You have Roserade at the top. You have Shaman, but Roserade currently, I did use it yesterday. Absolutely magnificent. Always has been such high DPS. But as far as the community day Pokemon, you have Sceptile with Bullet Seed and Frenzy Plant sitting at 15.3. And then if we move down, we have Venusaur with Vine Whip and Frenzy Plant sitting at 14. Now, I'm going to tell you a little something here. You may want to focus on those Bulbasaurs. Maybe get a good PvP IV one because they are fantastic. And not only in the Great League for Venusaur, but pretty much in all the leagues. So, Sceptile is going to be your number one grass type community day Pokemon with Bullet Seed and Frenzy Plant. So, if you can't get your hands on a ton of Rosary Candies, now is the time to stock up on those Sceptiles to possibly up your arsenal for grass types. Now, looking at the fire types here. We have Reshiram, of course, at the top, and then we have Germanitan, which is yet to be released for Gen 5. But then coming in that number three spot, the first one for the Community Day Pokemon is going to be Blaziken with Fire Spin and Blast Burn, sitting at 17.2 DPS and 382 TDO. Absolutely fantastic and works great. A bit glassy, but it is very nice. As far as PvP, it can't find some good usability. Charizard is also going to be something you want to focus on. Personally, for me, I only made, I think, two Blast Burns, so I'm going to have to make a little bit more, and uh, it should be pretty fun. Uh, as far as Chandelure, it's fantastic. Did use it yesterday. Check out my videos going up against those raids so you can see the performance there. Then taking a look at the water types, you have Kingler at the top with Bubble and Crab Hammer sitting at 16.9. DPS and a TDO of 371. The TDO is actually pretty horrible. And then you have Kyogre with Waterfall and Hydro Pump sitting at 15.9 with a TDO of 590. And let's see if we can find the first community today. That's going to be Swampert with Water Gun and Hydro Cannon sitting at 15.6 and a TDO of 494. Swampert is going to be an absolute beast. You definitely want to evolve those Mudkips all the way up to receive that Hydro Cannon on Swampert because it is going to be fantastic, not only going up against raids, but also in PvP. The thing is an absolute sweeper. Now, taking a look at Dragon types here. So Dragonite with Draco Meteor, that's going to be the community they move for. Absolutely useless. You don't even want it, all right? So if you want to have one just for your inventory, sure, go ahead. But Sceptile, basically bag on is what you're going to want to be focusing on. Dragon Tail and Outrage with a DPS of 18.2 and a TDO of 536. So it is a bit of a budget to Rayquaza. And I know legendary candies can be a pain as well as getting all the rare candies. So you may want to focus on bag on for the dragon types. Now, as far as the rock types are concerned, obviously we're going to be looking at Tyranitar with Smackdown and Stone Edge sitting at 14.4 and a TDO of 533. We have Rampardos as the number one rock type attacker with Smackdown and Rock Slide sitting at 18.4 and a TDO of 370. Extremely outpacing Tyranitar, but that's okay. Tyranitar is still good. And if you need some of those Smackdowns, go ahead and go for them because they're still worth it. Now, as far as Mammal Swine, it is going to receive Ancient Power for its Community Day move, so you don't need to worry about this one whatsoever because you can get Avalanche outside of Community Day, and it's just a waste with Ancient Power, basically. Maybe you want a little memorabilia or something. And taking a look at the top Psychic Attackers here, uh, this is going to be concerning Gardevoir and Glade. As you can see, the Kings of Psychic on page 1, and if we move over to page 3, we're going to have Gardevoir and then Glade with Synchro Noise. Psychic is actually going to be outpacing Synchro Noise. I'm not too sure why Niantic did that, but it's going to be strictly Psychic. You can go Synchro Noise yet again for, you know, that uh, Pokemon just to have the move in your inventory. And then taking a look at the ground type Pokemon here. I know a lot of you missed out or didn't catch a bunch of Trap Inch, uh, but Flygon is actually going to be pretty good with Mudshot on Earth Power sitting at 12.6 DPS and 330 TDO. If we take a look at the current top, that's going to be Mud Slap and Drill Run Excadrill sitting at 14.9, so not too far behind. And also Flygon is going to be extremely resistant against Electric. Now, focusing on the EVs, as you can see here, all of the EV evolutions, and personally for me, what did I tell you guys a couple of days ago? Start walking your Eevees that when you do evolve them into Umbreon, they will stay under 1500 as well as Espeon with Last Resort. Now, you possibly may need to have that Last Resort already on your Eevee. So if you have them stacked up, 
hold on to them and get ready. Now, here are all the name tricks. So if you haven't done those, you'll be able to simply name them and then evolve them. And of course, remember that Leafeon and Glaceon can evolve off of those Mossy and then the Glacial Lures. So if you do not want to use your name trick, you can simply do that to evolve them. As far as the other ones, if you did use the name trick already, well, you're just going to have to evolve them and hopefully get them. And remember, for Espeon and Umbreon, you have to evolve them during the night or day after you did walk them 10 kilometers for Umbreon, it's going to have to be at night, and for Espeon, it's going to have to be during the day, and you're going to have to keep them your buddy while you do this. Remember that. Maybe even restart your app before you evolve them. So Umbreon is something you definitely want to focus on, guys. That is a fantastic PvP Pokemon. As far as the other ones, they all have the single typing, so make sure you evolve a few of those. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, and I'll catch you all next time.